All hundred of us. You've got friends here. You know? You know? You know? You know? Welcome, everyone. We have some lovely friends from、uh, Gov Zero. Noah, Isabel, and Vivian. You know, the goal of this、uh, workshop is not only to for us to learn about what Gov Zero is doing or what Gov Zero has been doing for the past ten years and what Dow Zero is doing,、um, their Web three effort, but also for you know BZ members to get to know、uh, the Gov Zero people in Taiwan.、Uh, so hopefully, it's an interactive、uh, session. Uh, my name is Vivian, and I'm the one that is like basically moderating the thing today. Hi, everyone. My name is Isabel. Today, I'm going to share、uh, some facts about Cup Cup Zero. In the every Cup Zero hackathon, we will introduce ourselves by three keywords. So my keywords is a、uh, lawyer focusing in innovation,、uh, and I'm a chairperson of the Cup Zero Joseon, and I'm a committee member of、uh, Open Parliament. Cup Zero is a, a experiment started in 2012, by trying to create a social infrastructure. To allow the、um, citizens from different domains to take minimal visible actions and create possible solutions to these issues to get together through open source collaboration, it's an experiment. But we find it okay. Shit, it's that really works. So it's a very new thing ten years ago, and、uh, even now it's. Not easy for people to understand it. So, Gavrilo aims to use the technology in the interest of the public. So,、uh, we substitute the Gav with、um, zero to want to use the internet and the digital tools to change the tra- traditional go- government. So, after ten years, the results of this experiment are fifty-three hexons. Uh, more than 451 repos on GitHub, more than、uh, 800 uh, proposals, and more than 10,000 got got zero participants in the Slack channel,、uh, largest、uh, civic tech community in Taiwan. It is a, a polycentric or decentralized community. We have、uh, everyone come to the community's hackathon, can propose their own ideas, start their own projects. More than like 100 projects in、uh, in the community, and in every hackathon, we have 15 project、uh, proposals. How to make so many people to to co work collaborate together? We have、um, a consensus on this、uh, Gov Zero manifesto. It is said we come from. Everywhere, so everyone can join the community. It, there is no membership. You have, you don't have to ask for permissions or pay anything to、uh, get involved or join the community. So we are citizens collaborating to bring about change. We are polycentric community of self-organized contributors. We live open source. Open source is a A foundation of the community, and we have fun and want to change the status quo. And、uh, most important of all is that、uh, we are you. To many、uh, people, it is kind of different,、uh, difficult to understand what's、uh, Gov Zero, how the collaboration happened. It's actually like、uh, having a game, like a Pokemon team up. You come to the hack zone, so you which target you want to、um, attack. And、uh, to find the team members, you can find them at the hackathon and、uh, fight with the、uh, efficiency. So we have this motto in Gov Zero: "Ask not why nobody is doing this. You are the nobody." So everyone can、uh, join the community, find someone to solve the collaborate with you. What are the backgrounds from the Gov Zero? The most of them are engineers, and a lot of them are students. And the three、uh, three keywords of the Gov Gov Zero participants are uh, Python, uh, Wiki Data, Coding, Design, Education, Law. And、uh, this is the gender、uh, ratio in the community. In the early stage, almost eighty of the participants are、um, male. 
And now we have this ratio of uh, 60% male and uh, almost uh, 40% female. The aspects of uh, GovVero pro uh, projects impacting, the biggest part is open data and the open community infrastructure. Government reform are also very important part. Other than that, we have uh, many different, more than 60 uh, different aspects. So what are the projects? One of the projects I want to mention is the one in uh, 2014. Um, it is the digitalization of um, political campaign fund funding, which mobilized um, 10,000 uh, people join the crowdsourcing and finish the task force. More than uh, 300,000 pieces of data in just 24 hours. Then in 2019, we have this uh, open uh, platform in the government release the digital data of the uh, campaign fund funding. And uh, we have this uh, COFAC, uh, which is an information checking platform operated through crowd collaboration and the chatbot. You can send the message from the line uh, to the line robot and um, uh, they will send back the feedbacks uh, of the che uh, fact check if the, the facts you mentioned is already checked uh, in the COVAX community. When Taiwan meets, uh, face the threat of COVID-19, many citizens do not sit to wait for the government officials to give inst instructions and solve all the problems. Instead, they took ownership of the challenge and they tried to provide a solution with their own resources and the skills. At the early stage of the pandemic, with the government releasing the open data of uh, real-time mask stock, engineers created did more than 100 mask maps, uh, apps, and websites to provide information to people who were uh, trying to buy masks. So this is how Minister Oji Tong acted as the coordinator to open up the necessary data from the government to GovZero. And uh, after the data was open, many contributors developed a different form of website application or visualization. So it's like uh, government, government open data and GovZero can analyze, visualize or service design and the public uh, guess the apps and the websites. In May this year, when the spiral of um, confirmed uh, cases, there are more than 900 participants working on 15 projects with online tools in just one month. And this creates a social uh, solidarity, which is uh, crucial to the success of um, uh, containing the pandemic. So this project in includes aggregation, visualization, and even fact-check mechanism of information, help individuals to take the right action to fight against the pandemic. This or government part, uh, market provide information that, uh, with GovZero, participants will aggregate, classify, visualize, and design. Also, it includes uh, guidelines like uh, COVID-19 regulations, and uh, GovZero uh, participants will translate it and, uh, with, into multi-language versions. And also, it includes collaboration with government uh, about the contact tracing system. The architecture is uh, discussed in the GovZero community, and the OG bring uh, the results of the discussion back to the gov government. They have this page on the GovZero HackMD. Uh, it's a website. So to, um, with uh, QA pages, so people can uh, have feedback to it. So it's a mechanism like uh, GovZero have this idea, design and architecture, and the government will implement it. And the public get the uh, 1922 contact tracing system. Before the GovZero, people in Taiwan feel anxious about, feel worried about the political status and the complaint only. But now citizens could try to take ownership of the problems and think one step more how to solve the problem with the digital tools we have. I want to mention the, some ideas from the, <clears throat> this book, which called The Rise of Nerd Politics. They are 
at the intersection of technology and the politics. They have this shared determination to build the democ democratic systems that are fit for the digital age. And there is um, anti-authoritarian, and uh, they are uh, utopian but pra pragmatic and rooted in cosmopolitan. Clampers, including this background, people from this background, is computing, law, arts, media, and politics. And they work in teams and teams mobilize crowd. Open source is a very important part of uh, Gov Zero. Open data, transparency tools, and uh, collaborative uh, tools. Collaborative tools include the uh, HackMD and the um, also, the GitHub repos. We promote this uh, radical transparency. So, we encourage every uh, participants to uh, document their di discussion on the Hack and Open source licenses and uh, Creative Commons licenses are fundamental um, uh, to the community, which means the result of our uh, participants' uh, collaboration can be reused and uh, staked by the others. And also, the open culture is a very important one. Um, it includes like, talk is cheap, show me the code. Um, it is not necessary to be a code code. Uh, you can also write something down, just um, not just talk, but we can write down your ideas. And also release early, release often, uh, pages welcome, and uh, default open. So code content are open uh, to in the community. So you can, people can re reuse it uh, under the uh, open licenses. And uh, got their contributors share the same value, which includes open source, activism, transparency, equal, liberal, self-organized, polycentric, and uh, fun. I think we have these minimum norms in the community, which includes Gov Zero Manifesto, uh, Code of Conduct in every event, and also on the Slack. The projects and the task force can decide their own governance. We have very different governance uh, under each different projects. I think this is the uh, spirit of polycentric or decentralized community. And we use the uh, tools like HackMD, Slack, Google Sheets, GC, GitHub, Open Data for collaboration. But we also use Facebook, Inst Instagram, Flickr, Line to reach out to more potential participants. After 10 years, we still have uh, a lot of problems that needs to be solved. Because I, I think we don't have a very good mechanism to give participants a uh, credential for, for their job. Also, 90-99% of zero participants are volunteers. We would like to maybe bring some incentive um, mechanisms to uh, motivate uh, more people to join the community. So I think Noah will discuss about this um, later. So that's my share for now. Thank you. It was a great sharing and uh, interesting overview of Gulf Zero. Before we jump into the sharing by uh, the sharing by, by Noah, I would like to first uh, ask all of the audience if you have any question for uh, for Isabel or around Gulf Zero. Hi, my name is. Um... Jolie, earlier you posted about fact checking, like on the line, um, using line to fact check. Like right now, misinformation, I think, is a huge problem in America, especially as it influence our elections. And um, I keep on seeing misinformation spread all the time on Twitter. And I'm wondering, how do you all fact check? And how can you trust fact check, especially <laughs> since it's a huge group of people that we don't know who they are and it's just this line you know the disinformation problem is very uh, crucial in taiwan because it, it affects the results of uh, every election right so we have uh, since i think since uh, 2016 we have uh, a lot of uh, different fact check uh, organizations uh, as far as I know, there are more than six of them from different NGOs, and uh, they have different approaches. 
like we have this uh, um, journalist oriented uh, fact checking organization called the Shi Shi Cha He Zhou Xin Fact Check Center, and they they have these editors to uh, to do the fact checking. Um, this is one approach. The approach COFAX project use is crowdsourcing uh, fact checking. They have this platform. Uh, maybe I can share the their platform with you. So you enter this uh, platform and uh, you can log in and uh, do the fact checking. And the others will fact check your feedback. There are someone to use this fact checking system as uh, disinformation mechanism, but others will correct the, his feedback. So it's kind of like uh, uh, everyone can check out uh, everyone's uh, uh, fact-checking results. That's um, uh, the way um, COVAX used. I'm not sure this is the best one because it takes a lot of the efforts and the volunteers to do fact-checking. They have this online uh, platform, but they organized uh, a small hack zone uh, for, for fact checking uh, every other month, uh, week. So uh, it's a community to do the fact checking together. I think the most important of this uh, platform is uh, the data base of the result of fact checking is open source. So others can use the results of the backtracking. Commercial companies actually use this database to provide their own backtracking services. And also some analysts, they use a data um, database to analyze the coordinations between the fact, uh, disinformation to find out how the disinformation is um, passed around different home uh, pages and the websites. So it's actually kind of like an infrastructure of the fact-checking ecosystem. I think a lot of what GoZero is working on and how the approach related to how blockchain actually works. We open source and crowdsource in a way that people don't need to code to participate in all these um, different projects. I guess we can move on to Noah's sharing right now. Yeah, I don't have slides, but I'll just talk through, talk through some of the points. Um, so my name is Noah, and I am the uh, organizer and contributor at uh, Dow Zero. Isabel talked a lot about the amazing things that Dow Zero has been able to accomplish in the past 10 years. Uh, we, we only started Dow Zero a couple of months ago, so, so we're not... Uh, we're, we're still trying to figure figure things out for sure, but we do have a, a unified uh, vision, uh, which is our our mission is to supercharge Gov Zero. If we can supercharge Gov Zero, supercharge this contribution layer, then Gov Zero may be able to supercharge uh, Taiwan even more. Solve problems for Gov Zero to make it work more efficiently, and have more impact, basically. And if this model somehow works, then this whole uh, structure can be exported to uh, other other societies, to other countries as well. So we're also talking to people in Japan, people in Korea, Isabel will know that, uh, people people in Southeast Asia. So GovZero is not without its challenges. The main reason, whether it be project owners, initiators, or contributors, the biggest reason is that they want to make impact. They want to see changes. Key role in all this is are the, the project owners. The, the things that's keeping them from achieving uh, their goals of making impact, of being seen, is basically the same problem with almost all startups. It's people and money. And people a lot more than, than money. Although it's the same things, it's extremely different because when it comes to the civic organization, when it comes to these volunteer groups, they don't have the tools to really incentivize people to come contribute. And they don't have salaries, they don't have stocks, they don't have convertible notes to, to talk to investors. They don't have the tools to basically gather all these resources. These are the two problems we're, we're, we're looking at and we're trying to solve. So the first solution that we're trying to build is basically um, uh, a contribution system, a score system, maybe a token. Um, we're, we're thinking about a token, a soulbound token. Uh, so we don't use 
uh, fungible tokens, we basically uh, transferable tokens. We basically use cell bound tokens to incentivize people to to actually make contributions. And these cell bound tokens were still in the face of of design. How we can fairly distribute all the dispatch all these tokens to contributors. How people define contributions are so so different. Um, for Colfax, for example, they basically give you a point whenever you. Um, uh, do one fact check of a certain news. Contributions are extremely different across different projects. So we don't really have a unified way of recording contribution, but we're, what, what we do is basically empowering the project owners to give them the tools to determine uh, how they will define contribution and how they want to dispatch all these uh, uh, tokens, uh, solve our tokens, basically. One thing that we will, will probably do is to build use cases, to build utilities uh, on top of these solve tokens. Right? Uh, a couple of examples we're thinking about, of course, um, people are, uh, Isabel was talking about recognition. So a dynamic uh, PFP that basically changes according to how much contribution you've made. That, that can be interesting. That's one thing we're thinking about. The other thing is higher contribution scores, have more tokens. They basically have more weights when it comes to uh, quadratic funding. Can we airdrop hypersets to people uh, based on their contributions? Also, these are all like different uh, utilities that this solar token, this identity or this uh, reputation uh, of people as a Taiwan uh, contributor for Taiwan can basically gather and uh, amass some some momentum somehow in in the future. Very interesting, I think. Thing I can talk about is the con- the score actually decays over time if you stop contributing at a certain point. The privileges gather towards the people who are contributing right now, the uh, contributing the most right now, uh, instead of. Um, people who haven't been contributing for five years, six years, and then still accumulates a lot of points to claim certain stuff. Uh, we want to uh, move the privilege to people who are contributing now. These are some of the designs we're, we're thinking about right now, and we're doing some experiments. So if anyone is interested, you're welcome to join us. The other bigger direction that is re- relevant to what I just talked about is we, we just formed a, a local partnership with uh, Protocol Labs, this specific thing, specific thing called Hypersearch. And Hypersearch is very interesting because Hypersearch is designed for public goods. And what it does is basically, uh, so this is a story I tell all the time. There's a project called Project Together in Germany. And basically uh, what they do is they raise funds, they, they buy food and they dispatch those food to refugees. Yeah. Uh, during the burst of the Ukrainian war, they basically did, they didn't raise any funds, but they did dispatch all the food to, to the refugees. And what happened was that after they've done the action, after they did this, uh, a lot of donors basically donated a large amount of uh, funding to this specific uh, organization. The donors want to make sure their money has impact, right? So, so if this assumption is correct, can we issue NFTs uh, called hypersets? So, hypersets is basically an extension, a standard that's an extension of uh, ERC seven to one. Uh, they can distribute these NFTs to early uh, funders. Uh, early contributors, early uh, resource providers, and at a certain point, maybe there's a secondary market for it. The early contributors of any kind has uh, extra incentive of possible financial gains for public goods to to thrive in in the near future. I think this experiment is definitely extremely important. Um, So there are, of course, a lot of assumptions here. There are a lot of experiments and tests to be made, and that is why um, Zero is partnering with Protocol Labs to push forward. Actually, this will be mainly be, be Vivian's effort to push this forward in Taiwan. And also, if anyone is interested in, in this, you're welcome to join us. There are a lot of communication efforts to make sure people understand the potential of public goods in the Web3 space, to talk more about DAOs that, that can also be be a possibility. There is a study group. We are basically learning from all these sociologists, behavioral scientists, political scientists, understanding how 
us build a better society, help us build a better DAO. Insights will come come from there. There are people there are people inside DAO Zero who are trying to convert more uh, Web two engineers in Gov Zero into Web three engineers, so we can build more stuff. So these are all the different efforts that we're currently working on right now. A lot of people who are learning about Gov Zero and DAO Zero for the first time might ask, "What's the difference between Gov Zero and DAO Zero?" Dow Zero is the city organization, right? And Dow Zero basically consider itself um, a task force that's uh, trying to supercharge Dow Zero with Web3 tools. Like Isabel just mentioned, Dow Zero doesn't have any boundaries, right? So within within or outside of the organization is a little blurry somehow. So we basically where our connection is the mission is to supercharge Dow Zero. In, in the case of Prolabs, I think it's also Maybe interesting to to talk about how DAO Zero uh, can be a center point to import these global public goods experimentations into Taiwan. Use uh, Gov Zero as a field of experimentation, and once this is there are success cases, there are learnings we can export uh, globally. Basically, Provo Labs, Gitcoin, they have this conference called Find Commons back in. May and June, uh, this was hosted in New York, and we're bringing that to Taiwan. So that conference is also something to be to be to 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 be looked out for. And um, we're of course going to bring a lot of like different Taiwanese success cases to that point. So that will be a big checkpoint point for 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 Dow Zero and Gov Zero as well. So how can people participate? So so basically, we have a Slack channel. We do everything on Slack. Uh, like Wednesday night is usually the time that we have. Um, our meeting. Any of you joining Dow Zero, learning how Web three can be a part of the whole uh, the whole movement for civic tech? Feel free to join us. I just want to mention one um, one very important point is that a lot of uh, contributors in Gov Zero are outside Taiwan. They live in uh, Deutschland, in Boston, in Silicon Valley. But they just uh, come uh, join the Slack and they have this uh, online um, hackathons with the project, other project members. So it's so, highly possible that uh, people participate uh, remotely. And yes. I think there's actually also like a New York uh, Gov mm-hmm. Zero community. There's people hosting a hackathon in New York, solving problems they see in New York. Some some participants just started uh, is starting a Gabriel London hack uh, community. I think maybe we will have um, more, yeah, like this. Isabel shared a bit about like how we all got together and solved the problem we see in a society. So I would like to ask uh, all of the participants. Uh, what is the problem that you see in your government or society that you well, you have always wondered, like, why is it working in this way? No one has ever done anything to fix it or you haven't found any feasible solution. Uh, I think a problem that uh, we see in New York is taking the metro. It's uh, It can get like pretty suspect or suspicious uh, late at night or early in the morning. Um, you know, there's people who are either sleeping there or causing a ruckus. And I think it's, it's a problem that a lot of New Yorkers or people living in New York face, um, whether it's, you know, more mental health resources, one problem that I don't think the government, uh, of New York has been effective in solving. But what about like other, like civil society? Is there any, uh, solution around that? Not that I know of recently. I mean... I have noticed that at the end, like at the terminal stations, there are actually like some outreach groups that will go into the the trains and then we'll see like if there's anyone sleeping there and then they're like, I don't, I'm not sure what they do, but I, they might be holding like forms or like offering them other shelter to stay at. I'm not sure how, how efficient it is. I haven't, haven't been involved or. I, I want to echo Darren, what Darren said about safety. Because I was living in San Jose, and I also used to take um, metro to go to work. I had some uncomfortable experience because women especially um, take public transportation more 
the men, but there isn't a really proper mechanism for for women to protect themselves or call for help. Thanks for sharing. Um, so it's basically around um, the safety of a city. How safe you feel within uh, the city you're living in, and the infrastructure itself, and whether or not it's um, possible for any of you to take any actions. Uh, I would like to ask Isabel, like in the history of Gov Zero, is there any uh, is there any project related to like solving homelessness? Feel safer. Within uh, within the city, actually, an NGO bring a proposal to the um, to the community. It's about uh, providing food to the homeless with more efficient way. You know, in Taiwan, a lot of people want to uh, provide food for the homeless, so they just uh, have the, this um, uh, platform that. For people who want to provide, they don't. They can rush it on the pl- platform, so the food will be distributed more evenly and more efficiently um, among the all the homeless uh, uh, spots in uh, in the Taipei city. The reason why I'm asking you guys uh, anything about this is that uh, there's actually something we can uh, do together. And there's already some NGO or people proposing ideas and asking for help from the engineers to to build up something that can actually solve the problem they see in a society. So if there's like a platform like Cub Zero, coders, hackers, builders who are willing to sit and think a bit about the solution, it's highly possible that we can come up with something that would more or less improve the current situation. This city is considered <laughs> a, a public goods or, or Taipei blockchain with BZ considered a, a public goods? That's a good question. Because BZ is non-profit. I'm not sure if that makes it a public good. Well, I think public goods are supposed to be free, right? But technically, yeah. they, the conference isn't, isn't free. Some documentation of the, the um, event will be released under Creative Commons license. Then the results can be public work, uh, common goods. Mm, good idea. Also, I want to uh, mention that uh, the next Gabdero uh, Hakson is in December 17th, Thursday. It's, yeah, it's the last day, day of Taipei uh, Blockchain Week and the Developers Bootcamp, right? If anyone interested, you can check out the uh, registration link. I put in the chat box. So if any of you is interested in how GovZero is working on any of these things, feel free to join us in our Slack channel and then join the meetings we have uh, every week and first gauge uh, perhaps like how GovZero works and maybe you can bring it back to your community, bring it back to where you live and let's uh, start fixing problems we see in a society. Yeah, I think I think one thing that's really cool is uh, I want to mention is there's a lot of similarities between BZD uh, and Gov Zero. Number one being uh, decentralized or polycentric around the world, and also number two is like everyone's contributing without pay. <laughs> no one's really getting paid. Uh, everyone's volunteering their own time. So we both emphasize being open and fun. For those who are in Taiwan uh, or going to be coming to Taiwan soon, it will be really great for us to all hang out in person because a lot of the vibes, how we uh, innovate in the incentive structure, is a lot of notes we can share with each other on how do we motivate people, how do we organize people from around the world. Join our Slack group and you can start from there. Right. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. 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 Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 B